Hey, it's Tim. It's been a long time since I've done a video on my layout and it's uh, past due to show you around and let you see what I've accomplished in about four months. So um, this will be the first walkthrough in quite a while and still a lot yet to do. But uh, so anyway, we're gonna walk into the room and get started. Okay, so let's walk in and check it out. Oh, hey Serenity. She's my guard kitty. Okay, right now I have currently two trains running. Hopefully we can get through this without uh, Serenity being too much of a disruption. If not, I'll have to pause it and we'll start again. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to pause okay, it. Okay, so here we are back. Uh, she tends to get real chatty when I'm trying to do this because she thinks I'm talking to her. So. Anyway, it's just easier. I just put her uh, outside in the bathroom for now. She doesn't get along with the other cats, so that's why she stays in here. And she's really good. She doesn't uh, cause any real damage, and she doesn't shed, and she's clean. She's just a good little kitty. So anyway, so a lot of this part of the layout is remaining from the previous Faith Canyon route. I was able to continue keeping this. I just didn't have the heart to tear it out and plus uh, it worked well with the new design. Everything is, the new design is now double main line through and through except for this this one subdivision or what I call the high line. It's single track and you'd have a drop in section right here that crosses in across the door into the high line. Here it splits off. The track on the left will go in and into a hidden air section and come out at the other end of the layout. The line on the right is actually the high line. And it basically takes a large loop around and crosses over and will reconnect over there by the DNRG W. No trespassing sign. All the track on this layout is Walther's Code 83 Flex Track with their switches, except for uh, the older part of the layout, which is still hand laid. Here is the new engine facilities and the pro process of being uh, built. Just got the turntable installed. I haven't hooked it up yet, um, but at least I got two lead tracks going to it. The coaling tower in the background is from the earlier layout. I am not gonna use it on this layout, at least not here. I have a concrete, modern, more modern uh, coaling tower by Walters to build that will actually go there in its place. As you can see, I still have remained retained the original yard and this is all still the original part of the layout back here with its three percent grade and again here's some more of the original part of the layout i was still able to keep intact basically i left that whole shelf in, in, installed. Derail it. This section of the layout is called Troublesome. It's well named. I've always had issues with this part of the layout with the grade coming down and having switches at the bottom. I always tended to have derailments and even with the new uh, design and I was able to eliminate a lot of problems. I still had one issue with a switch I had put in it was all new track, but I had a number six switch here and I was still having problems. So I went ahead and ordered another switch. I meant to order another Walters number eight switch. Uh, unfortunately, the place I ordered it from sent the wrong one. They sent me an Atlas code 83 number eight switch. So I uh, went ahead and put it in anyway. Really can't tell any difference, uh, but it does uh, work a lot better than I pretty much eliminated all derailments for this section. As you can see, I still have retained 
the old engine facilities from the old layout. And uh, I'm going to basically kind of model it more of a not in use anymore, um, abandoned kind of look. We'll see. That's kind of what the theme I'm going with here. Uh, the two double track that you see here, that's going to be all a large bridge that'll be spanning across there. Uh, this is just temporary. Okay, so the line you see here going off to the left and the Y, that uh, is part of that hidden track that uh, connected over there by the door. Uh, this is basically my uh, interchange with the Colorado and Southern slash Burlington uh, Railroad. So that's what this is. And we have the big loop. Oh, got to get a shot of the train. There are 38 turnouts on this layout at this point. Probably going to have a couple more before I'm done. There's over 450 feet of track. Don't know how it happened that I got this much track in this size of a layout, but uh, I'm pretty pleased. I'm really astonished that there is that much fit in this room. The room is 12 by 23 feet. A lot of the places on the layout I have yet to name uh, where you see the passenger train parked. At this point, I'm considering just calling that summit. And this is the high line you see going up, the single track. You'll recognize this bridge from the past layout. I have turned it around. I also uh, shortened the spans so that uh, it isn't nearly as tall. I only took about an inch off. I needed to in order to get it to fit in place. But I have managed to salvage it and incorporate it in the new layout. And here is the high line again, looping around. Uh, minimum radius on this layout is 26 inches on the main line. Uh, most of the curves are 28 or 30 inch or bigger. And it, uh, it's very impressive to see them, the trains going around these curves. Scenery-wise, that's going to be the next phase. I haven't quite made up my mind exactly what I'm going to do yet. Um, but this section right here is Faith Mountain. And as you can see, this large outcropping actually hides a queen-size bed under it. Also, I have my workbench situated under here as well. I had done my best to incorporate as much space as I could to get everything to fit in. And underneath here is the bed. And TV set. You go around this way, I actually have a human tunnel. Now this I built or installed so that I could have shelving and storage underneath there in both ways. So I just can go in there and get the materials, building materials, parts, tools, whatever I may have, as well as storage of uh, boxes for the trains. Our new system that is this ESU Ecos command station. I just got this. It's incredible. It's probably the most technologically advanced system that's out there for DCC. And I absolutely love it. Uh, all touch screen, large, easy to read, easy to uh, use. And it's just uh, just a joy. I really love it. And it was worth every penny. And just one last thing, I'll just pan across the room, uh, show some of the things that I have that uh, are part of my past, a lot of history, as well as the collection I have. This collection here is actually the first trains I ever had when I was uh, probably three or four years old. 
the original ones are gone, but I was able to locate and purchase the exact copies on eBay. I got an assortment of lanterns as well as other artifacts. So anyway, that's it. Um, I'll try to keep doing updates and hopefully uh, new videos every couple weeks. So anyway, feel free to comment below and um, share and like and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you and have a terrific day. I still have issues with derailments on this layout, but they're very minor. And they tend to be just certain equipment being finicky and not liking tr certain track, whether it's a switch or a, a spot in a curve, what have you. Still working out the bugs on that. Very few though, considering how many feet of track there is and how many switches, I have very few derailments. And typically I can just let the trains run continuously and just enjoy watching them go by without uh, really having any issues. However, passenger cars, that's another story. I'm still having some issues with passenger cars, especially uh, ones with uh, triple axle trucks. They tend not to be performing as well as I'd hope, and I have a feeling it's basically a manufacturer issue more than it is my track or anything. Uh, so, those are going to have to be worked on and tweaked and hopefully get them uh, to where they're uh, working flawlessly. Other than that, as far as all the locomotives I have in my collection go and so forth, I'm not really having any issues. So anyway, um, just one of those things in the hobby you have to contend with. One last thing I wanted to add is that you probably would notice that I had to stop the video a few times during the segment. And that's because there was a couple derailments while I was uh, showing the video. So I uh, had to pause it and correct the problem. And after a while, I realized that there was more of a problem. Excuse me. And uh, 
I ended up having uh, several spots I had to do some tweaking on the track work and I did get them fixed and everything's running smooth and uh, couldn't be happier. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.